Um, from the 34th Chaos Communication Congress in Leipzig. So, good morning everyone on day 4 of 34C3. And we're getting started right away. Here's Leander Seigel on stage and he'll be talking about international image interoperability framework, how cultural institutions can create an interoperable framework for digitalized works of art. Give it up for Leander. Right. Thanks a lot. Um, also uh, from my side, good morning everyone. And I'm really happy that even though this is day four of the Congress, all of you showed up for this first talk today. So thank you very much for being here. And I'm really glad to have the opportunity to present this uh, favorite technology of mine. The International Image Interoperability Framework that allows us to create interoperable um, exchange points for digitalized uh, cultural works. About myself, I work at the University Library of Leipzig and in the Department for Digital Services, and so that is my background, how I get to deal with these things on a daily basis, but um, it's also a private passion of mine, and so I have a few private side projects going on in that area. So I think it's well known and many would agree with me that digitalized images are a fundamental part of uh, our cultural heritage. Uh, for example, scriptures, um, paintings, manuscripts, um, there's uh, more access being made available through this. Um, it was restricted um, uh, in earlier years, but now its um, access is provided to lots of people. And so far, digitalization was connected to meant that the metadata, the images themselves, were kept in um, closed off systems weren't, uh, there wasn't any a possibility to connect them to uh, other data and so um, that meant um, the data was also uh, saved in a way that um, it was only possible to work with a certain uh, system to present uh, the data. And so this is an example uh, from a couple of years back. This was uh, very modern um, back then, but uh, today this isn't uh, what we're looking for at all and it doesn't um, meet our demands. And so how this will look like, I'm going to talk about that soon. So here, um, an example of the situation that we were confronted with in the last few years, and it's still that way. Um, Isolated systems, they yeah, have their different characters and they're, they're accessible from repositories, but they, there's no interoperability between them. And so that is where the International Image Interoperability Framework comes in. So um, this built upon, this built a spec and API between the repositories themselves, where digitalized images and metadata is located, and these APIs um, were connected with the presentation, the uh, front-end layer, so that not even um, bound uh, by certain institutions, all these uh, workspaces could be um, 
flew together by the user, um, so it was up uh, to the user. And this came out of a community um, from the Stanford University Libraries, the British Library, the libraries at Oxford, and this community has really grown quite a lot. For example, the Bavarian uh, State Library is very much involved, uh, our library here in Leipzig, and uh, one in France as well. And so it's uh, a lot of very uh, renowned international libraries are participating in this, even the Vatican Library. They also provide their digitalized works of art in this interoperable um, framework. So there's four APIs right now that are licensed under CC BY license. Two of them are necessary to um, enable a presentation, the image API that delivers the pixels themselves, and the presentation API that provides the structure and metadata for these pixels and makes them available in an interoperable way. Other APIs uh, concerned with are concerned with search and authentic authentication, and, uh, but I'm not going to talk about it more. And so what's nice about this is that it um, is built on uh, Canvas data. The data is stored in a JSON format. And the identifiers are usually HTTP URIs, um, and so that allows us to link different sources no matter how they're saved. Um, a few words on the presentation API. The hierarchy um, is modeled here. We have uh, the collection that creates, um, that bundles multiple works to a reasonable collection. So um, researchers can create their own collections. Um, and then we have a manifest file, so this a manifest file means um, it defines a work as a series of images, and then we have the canvas, and that can be annotated using images or text. So, for example, on this slide you can see that this abstract canvas object is annotated with the original image content. And so this allows us to fill this canvas object you with different uh, images, with different context, context with uh, different annotations. And so these uh, manifest files are structured uh, in this way, as you can see on the slide. Don't have to look uh, at all the details, it just uh, gives you a rough idea of how the internal structure works. And in the same way, the annotations that the users themselves can create within this framework, uh, they're structured the same way, and so it's possible to create annotations for, uh, in my own system for objects that aren't even uh, necessarily available within my own system, but in some other institutions. And again, this is represented here using this triple IF um, we can combine images from different repositories and collect them into a single unified research environment, which is a nice term, I think. Um, and then and then save our uh, scientific research uh, results. 
für die APIs von IIIF gibt es für die APIs, die wir für dieses Projekt benutzen, für die Softwareanwendungen. Ich äh, greife hier immer nur ein Beispiel raus, dass ich auch gleich noch live few, uh, zeigen live werde. Examples right now. Die ähm, äh, für die Presentation API gibt es einige Viewer, die die Digitalisate darstellen können. We can digitally present some examples for this API. Fähig ist also aus verschiedenen Quellen verschiedene. And these things actually are combined from different data sources that are then shown together. Und auch äh, über umfangreiche Funktionen der Bildmanipulation. And then we see the function of how this um, Uh, application of the pictures combining together. It's a dynamically structured um, combination of pictures. Here we're looking at which section of the picture is actually taken and is it rotated at all? Der die, äh, dann und so we can then call and request certain information from the server and then have certain things pre presented back to us. It's dynamic for every application that we're using. Wie auch bei der Presentation API gibt es eine ganze Reihe von äh, Softwareprodukten. Uh, for our Presentation API we have a, a range of different applications. This is an IP image server we're using now as an example. And we're using Apache under the hood. And this is based upon the picture data that Uh, there's different resolutions for the uh, different sections of the pictures, and then it is then resolved and displayed dynamically. There's different um, types. There's TIFFs that's uh, usually used. Um, JPEG 2000 is actually a little bit more difficult. The OpenJPEG implementation should improve uh, with this context. The first example we have is this papyrus from Ebers. It's uh, from Egypt. It's a paper scroll that's over 3,500 years old. Has about 880 medical uh, treatments written on it. Rolle hat eine Gesamtlänge von 18 Metern. The roll has a length of 18 meters, over 18 meters, and it's now digitalized. Auf dieser um auf unserer Seite und ist auch per IIIF abrufbar natürlich. So this is yet, uh, th this is now um, callable, we can now call this to be loaded um, and we can look at the quality of this, this is very good and then we can zoom out to see the entire thing at once. Das digitale Saat hat übrigens, uh, ist 145.000 Pixel breit. Uh, hier 3,000 pixels high gives you an idea of how large this document is. And it has different functionalities on top of it. So we can look at the translation that's loaded over it. We can look at which medical treatments would then be prescribed for different conditions. And now we're skipping over some slides. This is our second example for the codex. This is the first full New Testament manuscript. It was actually separated. The first section was in England, the second in Leipzig, the third in Russia and also one in Egypt. 
perfect uh, use case. I so this is actually a perfect use case to look at because this document is separated from each other. So we need to then actually combine them to see the work in its original entirety. Toppen kann man die ganze Sache allerdings noch dadurch, dass es einen eine zweite Bildhandschrift gibt, die Here is a second picture of some handwriting. Der, äh, wie der Name schon sagt, im Vatikan. And this was actually uh, sitting right now in the Vatican. Das ist die Leipziger Blätter des Codex Sinaiticus bei uns als IIIF bereitstellen und die And then there's also some in Leipzig. Blätter des Vatikans, auch von den Vatikanischen Bibliotheken. Es ist in der Vatican Library. Als Triple äh, IF. Uh, under I, our framework right now. So, oh. so now we're going into a demo. And I'm going to show you how it's possible to use a Triple IF compatible uh, layer that you can. Um, create yourself uh, and then use various digitalized works from various institutions. Uh, I'm going to use the uh, Codex Sinaiticus from Leipzig and I'm also going to load the manifest from the Codex uh, Vaticanus into this layer. And now I have this viewer and so now it's very easy for me to have the these works um, next to each other and using this example I can I can uh, pick whatever uh, works I want um, so for example if we look at the same um, content, the start of the Book of Easter, and I, as a layman, don't know much about this, but it's uh, you can see um, that it's uh, the same content, the same words. So, moving on, um, again, a representation um, of how this works. Uh, looking at uh, digitalized works from different repositories being loaded at the same time. Example number three is a demo from Project Mirador. Here we can see a manuscript from France and apparently this happened quite a lot an illustration was cut out of it and today this illustration is uh, uh, in another institution's repository and so now using this triple IF model we can combine different digitalized works on the same canvas so now we can recreate the uh, original impression um, using these digital tools and since this is such a nice system I can uh, show you how annotations work now so we can define a certain area and then enter our text important notice and uh, depending on how the viewer system is configured this annotation get saved uh, locally but it's also it will be possible in the future to uh, have a work environment for researchers to um, um, deposit their annotations uh, in some central system uh, here another um, look into the manifest file here we can see that the URL is loaded from different image servers um, and uh, those two images get combined on the canvas layer. Sorry. So another example 
we have this technology um, tested in the real world at the University Library of Leipzig. There's a, a handwriting course every year, and so we provided a work environment for the participants in which they could use our own manuscripts, um, but also manuscripts uh, from other institutions. And annotate these manuscripts um, working together and so um, document their research uh, results together. And this was provided by uh, Stanford University Library uh, using the this Mirador uh, system that I've talked about already. And as I've said in the beginning, I want to talk about a little private project of mine um, using Wikidata and uh, the SparkQL endpoint. I loaded images of caps onto my own server, um, changed the format to uh, IIIF and uh, made it available for the public and searchable. And so now in this system, you can uh, pick the digital works. And now I can also show you the drag and drop feature that is recommended for implementing the discovery system uh, with presentation systems. Abrufbar macht und über dieses Logo sind dann auch die IIIF Manifest Dateien, die man benötigt, um die Daten in andere Workspaces zu ziehen. And here, through this system, you can also reach the IIIF Manifest files to uh, use these images in different uh, contexts. And so, another interesting fact. Uh, a lot of institutions have used um, the IIIF system to provide uh, digital content online. For example, the Metropolitan Museum of Art in New York, uh, another institution in France, uh, and also one uh, in Switzerland. And they have this project called eCodices. Um, and you know, uh, you can uh, look at the PDF presentation later and uh, get the URLs from there. Um, Archive.org also supports us, uh, supports the um, standard by now. Uh, so this to give you an example of uh, huge data pools that you can um, tap to uh, fill uh, your presentations or your projects. So this triple, these triple IF APIs uh, are constantly being uh, de developed further. Um, there's going to be a switch um, of the data models uh, for different annotation possibilities, and we also want to support video data. Looking at the institutional uh, side of things, um, the University Library of Leipzig um, passed the open digitalization policy. Um, so, most of the digitalized works, um, we want to publish them under CC0 or CCPD mark licenses and also IIIF compatible. And so, um, if you go on this URL, you can look into a digitalization um, workspace and uh, see uh, what is being digitalized live. One more remark, um, we're going to have a hackathon soon in Leipzig uh, where we will also host the IIIF workshop. Thank you very much for your attention. If you want to learn more about IIIF, then you can check that out at IIIF.io. And here's my contact information. And if there's any questions, you know, we still have some minutes left. <laughs> Applause. 
Vielen herzlichen Dank, Leander. Ähm, wir haben fünf Minuten für Q&A. Das heißt, wenn ihr Fragen habt, stellt euch euch an. Ähm, Frage an den Signal Angel. Ist das Internet schon munter und hat Fragen? Keine Fragen aus dem Internet. Dann fangen wir bitte mit Mikrofon 1 an. Good morning. Good morning. Thank you very much for the presentation. Thank you very much for the presentation. Frage, gibt es Schnittstellen zu Inventur oder Inventardatenbanken wie StarTex, Tida? My question then is about the database. Uh, what text is there exactly? Um, da, also auf speziell dieses Produkt, uh, da kann ich keine aus. Um, so this this product, I I can't say anything about that, but I believe IIIF is a well, it's just the description of a, a standard framework. Um, and so systems um, would have to provide access points to uh, realize the standard. Meine Frage ist, das ist ja jetzt ein Standard. My question is, there's now a standard. Are there alternative standards? Der große Vorteil ist ja, dass I mean, das alle verwenden. The big advantage here is that everything you, you can alter it, uh, you can apply it. But what about if Berlin uses a different standard, for instance? Wird es irgendwie allgemein verwendet in der Bibliothek? And then how do you then uh, in common uh, apply all of these different standards? Es gibt einen, tatsächlich einen äh, älteren konkurrierenden äh, Ja, der ist ein older standard. Uh, based on XML files. Um, in which data is supposed to be delivered as whole images, but the technological standard we provide uh, layered images, um, and that's really um, we're one of a kind there. Sonst noch Fragen? Hat sich das Internet mittlerweile... Any more questions? Die schlafen alle noch. No. Haben die auch Party gemacht, so wie wir alle. <lacht> uh, Everybody is still tired. Sonst niemand mehr, dann würde ich sagen, vielen herzlichen Dank. All right, so, thank you very much, Leander. Thank you for listening to the interoperability...